We're real excited. You know, for me, it's always been a privilege to be here. This is my 39th summer. It's Ron, Ron's, who's the founder, the owner of the camp, along with his daughter. Ron founded this. This is going to be the 50th summer of French Woods. So. <laughs> So if you're coming this summer, it's, it's, well, every summer is special, but this is going to have a lot of fun, a lot of excitement, a lot of stuff planned because it was a big birthday for Ron. Ron turned uh, 40. I turned 30 this summer. So, so uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, so we got a lot, of, a lot in store for this summer, so it's, it's going to be exciting. We're hoping to go another 50, if that's possible. A um, little background, when the camp started, camps were traditionally uh, eight weeks. Uh, the um, camp director wrote a program. All the kids uh, went together as a division or as a bunk. Well, when Ron came on the scene back in the late 60s, he decided that he'd like to do an individually programmed camp. So the kids write their own program. Then he said, you know, for people who can't afford to spend all that money on eight weeks, I'm going to do three weeks at a time. And in three weeks, I can get a lot accomplished. So he started a camp that was sessional. Nobody had done that. And individually programmed. Nobody had ever done that. And all his colleagues said, oh, you know, you're not going to last a summer. Well, of course, they were wrong. 50 years later, I don't know how you found us, but French Woods is the most successful camp probably in the world. There's <laughs> There's absolutely no camp like it. I was very lucky to find it, and my children grew up here. And I'm, you know, for me personally, it was a life-changing experience. I now have my grandchildren here, and I just watch how they grow and change every summer and what they get out of this place. At this point, it's so late in our lives, we are seeing hundreds and hundreds of our campers' children coming this summer. So we probably have between 150 and 200 of our campus children going to show up somewhere along the line during the, the five sessions that we have here, which is very, very exciting for me. The thing about French Woods that also makes it very, very special, it's a really safe place for kids. It's a place where you could be yourself. And, you know, we talk about um, tolerating differences at French Woods. We celebrate differences. It's a real, real unique place. Um, I can tell you two quick stories. <laughs> two quick stories before we show the video. Um, I, I was taking a tour of the camp with a family. This guy has to go back, God, it must be 15, 20 years ago. And I'll never forget, um, there was a little girl. She was 11 years old at the time. She's probably married with children now. And a family asked her, why do you love French Woods? And she thought for a minute, and she said, you know, uh, at home I'm different, but uh, <clears throat> here everybody's different, which is really, really unique. And then I had a family at, at the house. We had a get-together, an open house for new fa families and old families and families who were interested in camp. And one mom was just saying, you know, my son, he, you know, he'll walk through the school and he'll sing and dance in the halls and the big boys will make fun of him. And he said at <coughs> French Woods, they harmonize with him. So you get the idea of what, what it's like. All these people getting up, somebody who I swear we didn't plan for that young lady to come up here and sing, that she could come up here and sing. <laughs> <clears throat> so hopefully when you get your kids home, they'll be um, really more motivated. They'll be more independent. They'll even make their bed for the first month after they come home from camp. <laughs> Might throw out the garbage, but they, they do learn to take care of themselves, which is an incredible you know, aspect of camp in, in, in general. Um, what I'd like to do before I go into explaining majors and minors and all those things and auditions and stuff like that, I'd really like to show the video. So if we could do that, we'll show the video and then we'll go over the nuts and bolts of what French Woods is and why it's so different than all the other camps. And uh, Beth and I will go over the, the and Rose as well. Oh, 
French Woods is so cool. Really, really fun. You can do anything you want. You get to choose what you want to do. Instead of just focusing on one thing, you can do like 50 things here. I like everything. I love everything. I can't pick one favorite. We do um, about 70 shows a summer here. Everything like at French Woods is very professional and it's really fun. If you audition for a musical, you get into a musical. And it's so professional. You see shows here that, like, that's not a kid's show. Everything gets taken from Broadway right to camp. Frenchwood's theater classes are very diverse. There are casual classes that the kids can come in and participate in, but there are also classes that are really on the college level. They have acting for the stage, acting for the camera, they have college audition prep. And every year you learn something different because there's so many classes to take. Fight Club, we do uh, stage combat, which is um, choreographed fight scenes. My second major is accents and dialects. Yeah, sure. And it looks really good on your resume. Well, in stagecraft, you can build sets. I also like learning about the different types of lights and learning how to use light boards. The kids are all involved in the pit, they're involved in the show, they're involved in lighting, they're involved in the tech work, they're involved in everything, so it's like a camp run show with all campers. Kids do not audition to come to French Woods. They are placed in an ensemble that works for them. French Woods is, is a huge part of making me a better performer. You play with people, uh, you know, at, at your level and much, much, much better than you. These kids in the symphony orchestra are playing a piece of music that is at the college and professional level. And they're going to say to their friends, I play the Capriccio Espanol, the Vermsky Korsakoff, and the kids are going to say, no, you didn't. that's way too hard. We then have our jazz ensembles and our jazz improv, which allows you to learn as well as improve on jazz pedagogy and working on improvisation. You can get all your friends together and have a great time playing music, doing the things you like. You get better. As a vocal student at French Woods, you can improve your skills through private lessons and performing ensembles. One of the great things about our program is the fact that you can experience music making at all levels. First major, I have prep strings and I play the viola. It's for beginning strings that aren't quite ready for like the harder and more advanced things. There's a cello, viola and violin teacher, and they all give you private lessons. Oh, hi there. I'm Mark. I run the rock shop. Well, right now I'm in a band called the Rusty Keys, and we play blues. You meet all different kinds of friends. You can be in bands and you can play whatever whatever instrument you want you can play. And rock and roll doesn't have to be difficult to be good. It just has to have some energy and some attitude. In the beginning when I started, I had like never touched a keyboard before, and it's so cool that they can teach that to me. The recording studio here is like absolutely amazing. They use something called Pro Tools, which is the same program used in professional studios. Don't care about me, I don't care about that. It's really fun when they get up on stage and they play a song and they couldn't have been, even played anything at the beginning of the session. Good morning, this is French Woods Radio. You get to have our own radio show and you get to like choose your own segments instead of having preset ones. And then we go on air every day all around the world. And so all of our friends and our family can listen to it. You get to put on whatever music you want. It's really cool. Canteen's almost like a hangout, you know? You have ice cream and pizza. You have it every single night. It's like a party with a DJ. I just dance around and act crazy. We offer classes in all varieties of dance. And they have a bunch of different levels, so you get placed in a group of people who are on the same level as you. So if you're in advance and you've been dancing your whole life, we can help you continue to improve your technique. When you go to an audition, 
anywhere else, it's going to be, you learned this years back at Frenchwoods. You can do it. All right, come on, let's go. And if you've never ever danced before, we have classes that you can take to try things for the first time. And certain activities like being in a show, even things like circus or gymnastics or skills that help in dancing that you don't get in a dance class, but you can get here. Everything I have, I credit to French Woods, and I think I've gotten so much better over the years. I came to French Woods not knowing what a pas de was or any steps, and I'm leaving knowing what so many things are and being able to do so much more than I ever thought I could. Circus is amazing. Every kid dreams of like running away to the circus, and here you actually get to run away to the circus. There's so many different things you can do. I mean, aerial acts and ground acts, there's something for everyone. It's scary at first, but then you get really used to it, and then you want to do it over and over and over again. I didn't even know half the stuff existed. I'll put pictures on Facebook of me doing circus stuff, and people are like, what is that? Like, they don't even know what it is, and I've been learning it for years. It's just so crazy fun and wild. And it's hard not to be carried away by the sheer scale and the, the spectacle that you're going to see. Say you're scared of something that you're about to do, and then you go down and you almost kind of laugh with glee because you're like, oh my gosh, I did that. If you love the sport enough, then you're going to have fun. And so we try to keep it competitive, but not, you know, cutthroat. But the coaches are great, and they teach you, like, beginner skills as well as the more advanced skills. We accommodate everyone, all levels, boys and girls. Our tennis program gives you the chance to play in a tournament or in a private lesson with one of our college or pro athletes. You have an option to sign up for one-on-one -on -one instruction, and, and that's valuable when you're trying to learn a sport like tennis, which is considered a skill sport. Our fitness and motivation center has become one of the most popular places in camp. It's pretty much a high-end gym. If you go to a really, really nice gym and have to pay for it and everything, it's already here and you can just do it for free. The uh, trainers are always there so they could show you how to use the machines and do different exercises, so it's really good. Because of French boys, I'm going to join a team when I get home because I can use my new skills. One, two, three. An actor can make you weep. A comedian can make you laugh, but only, only the magician can make you gasp in astonishment. I love the feeling of getting to amaze audiences and seeing that expression like, wow, on their faces. And then afterwards, it's kind of annoying getting bombarded with all these questions about, how'd you do it? Can you tell me, please? During magic, there's something called trick of the day every day where you get to learn a new trick and take it home. Like so. I've actually, last year, did that pretty much every single day because then I want to come home with a huge bag of tricks. Magic department, I've, I've been doing some sleight of hand and that helps with like card tricks and I go home and I'm just like, hey, check this out. Then you can go to like really big things like chopping people up. Things that you've seen performed on national television uh, by, by world-class magicians and we not only have them here, we teach them here. And I did stage magic and I cut my friend Sarah into six pieces and it was really fun. <laughs> Fun. The training is amazing. You can do either English or Western. I love to jump. It feels like you're flying, and the horses here are so much fun, and they're so enthusiastic. I really like riding Western and the trails. The trails are really cool. They are miles long. They are beautiful. Well, there's this one horse that I really like that I adopted, and I take care of it, and then like you groom it, and then you ride it, and his name is Trigger, and he's like a small, nice horse who doesn't like scare me. Visual arts is really cool. They have so much there. They have silk screening. You make shirts, like you design a shirt, and it's really fun. I've already designed three shirts, and teachers were like, these are so good. I'd never touched a piece of homemade leather before, and now I have my own homemade leather guitar strap. Um, I like to go out and take pictures with my friends and then get to print them out so I can hang them up at home. 
choose your own project, you're gonna make whatever you want. I go to visual arts to help me wind down from circus and it's just my place where I can rest and have fun with my friends and just have fun. Model hobbies is trains, radio controlled cars, and rockets. <laughs> On video, you make really great short films. You can make any type of video you want. Make up your own plot line, and you can incorporate your friends and have them play characters in your video. Short films, I'm making a movie with almost everyone from my bunk. And you can act, and you can direct, and you can write, and you can do sound, and you can edit it. So if you're interested in learning shooting techniques or video editing, we can teach you Final Cut Pro. Some films are entered into professional film festivals. One of the films I uh, made here last year uh, I used to get into college as my uh, college portfolio film, and I actually got a full scholarship to the college I'm currently going to. We have a large indoor studio with a green screen that we can use to drop you into any digital environment you can imagine. So your movie can literally take place anywhere. Waterfront is really fun because on the trampoline you get a jump. You can just swim, you can go banana boating. They can come down to the waterfront, relax, lie in the sun, hang out with their friends, or you can step it up and have a nice adventurous period down there. You just go on and you just have fun. I took lifeguarding lessons and now I'm a certified lifeguard. I could do it all. <laughs> it's very nice to just be out there with some friends and just, you know, go around the lake having some fun. We teach a very important life skill, that is cooking. And they teach you different techniques on cooking, like sauteing and chopping. We do simple cakes, we do a little bit more complicated cakes. Yesterday we actually made, like, cinnamon donuts. And you also get a recipe, like a recipe book, that she gives you, like, an entire book of everything they've made all summer. And then, of course, they get to eat all this really neat stuff. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. Project Adventure is the place where the kids will really challenge themselves. Most kids who try it for the first time get very nervous and they can't even make it up to the top. The first time I did it, I wasn't really scared. I was more like, just like amazed how hard it was. I was climbing across bridges, across logs, going down a zip line really fast. And after a few tries, their feeling of confidence just shoots through the roof. All the different styles of skating mixed together, which is great. Yeah, the half is pretty big. I learned how to drop in on it last year. Hi, I'm Keelan. I'm, I'm about to drop into the 10-foot half fight. The bull, it's very fun. It actually feels like you're riding on the wall. If you're scared, they'll like do it for you first, show you how to do it. There's a bunch of kids who I saw the first day who didn't really know how to skateboard and now they're shredding. Ron Schaefer was one of the first, was the first director to do something like this, where the kids choose their own activities. He's created this incredible place where kids can really be themselves. This place makes everyone feel welcome. You can just be yourself. Like, no one judges you, and that's why I love it here. My dad went to camp here when he was a kid, and he said that it was just amazing, and he couldn't wait till I got to go. I have a community of friends all around the world because of this place. I have friends who live in France and Australia and England, and then I come here, and it's like we never even left. You want to come back every year. You don't want to go home, because even your bunkmates, they're like your family. I mean, we spend the whole year looking forward to seeing each other, so when we're here, it's just all the excitement just builds up, and it's just, it's like magic. They will find a place where they can be themselves, find out more about themselves, and grow as a human being. Everyone becomes one whole community that works together to create, like, the best summer of your life. A lot of parents tell us that, wow, what a great video, but it doesn't do the camp justice. The camp is so much better than the video. And the video is made by us. The music is the kids' music. Uh, the videotaping is done by the kids and the staff. So we've put it together our, our, ourselves, which is great to be able to do all these things here at camp. So something to know. What's that?
right? I always feel the same way. I missed it, right? There's so many great things to do. Um, I, the thing that drives the program here, because this is a very, I'm trying, I can't get it out. All right, so what makes this program very unique, besides being individualized, we have something called majors and minors. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that, describe the program to you. Uh, just, a, just a quick insight. After we finish here, we're gonna take you up to the dining room for lunch. You'll, you know, and you'll get an idea of what it's like to eat at camp. Uh, right after that, we're gonna take the kids to different activities, among which will be circus and rock and roll and sports. And uh, Ron is holding a audition technique class, which is incredible, and if you are interested in theater, you should definitely go to it. Um, we, we'll have magic, you'll have a trick of the day to take home, and we'll hold up signs in the dining room, and every all the parents will come back here with me, and we'll go over uh, all that you want to know about French Woods. You'll have some time to uh, ask questions. When we're finished with that, we're gonna take everybody on a tour, we're gonna to divide you up into a dozen groups, uh, so our staff will take you on a walking tour. Uh, the kids will come back from their activities and meet us outside. If you keep the kids outside, we can finish in here and we'll come out and meet the kids and we'll all go on a tour of the camp. Uh, that should be over about 3.30, a quarter to four, and if anybody has any questions, we'll all still be here and you're welcome to stop by and ask questions. If you wanna go hit some tennis balls, Rose will let you on the court, shoot some baskets. You know, we're all here. We're not going anywhere till September. So uh, you've, we're a captive audience. Um, majors and minors. We have a six period day at French Woods. Uh, three are called majors, three are called minors. Don't confuse majors with a college major. A college major, you major in one thing for your whole career. Here, a major simply means something you stick with for three weeks. So there's three periods a day you're gonna go to every day for three weeks. Minors are electives that you choose every single day. You could do the same thing, you could try different things. It's a great opportunity at a place like this to really try various activities and, and see what you like. If you love something, it's a great uh, time of the day also to uh, take more of music or dance or theater. So it gives you an opportunity, it's very, very flexible. So your majors could be theater, music, dance. It could be horseback riding, basketball, and swimming. It could be just about anything. But you'll know you're gonna be going there every day, it usually culminates into some sort of presentation, performance, concert. So if you're in musical theater, you'll be going to rehearse every day. You'll probably have a minor also, because they'll probably need, in most cases, two hours a day of your time to prepare the shows that we do. We do about 80 different shows, and we probably do about 180 performances during the course of the summer. And we do each show, most of the shows, in two and a half weeks, which is pretty much what they do on Broadway. They rehearse, and then they get going. We do the same thing. I'm like amazed at how incredible the kids are to, to get their shows together. Uh, is Beth here? Uh, Beth is uh, Ron's partner. Beth was born at camp. And I want her to talk a little bit about the majors and minors in programming, and then she's gonna introduce Rose to you. We'll talk a little bit more about the things she does through the program office, and um, then I'll get back to you. Oh, and also I want Beth to talk a little bit about what it's like for the auditions, because Beth grew up here as a theater person. She went to the New World School of the Arts, which is part of University of Florida, which is an incredible arts program in, in musical theater. So she'll tell you about our majors, minors, go into a little, let Rose talk about what she needs to talk about and she'll get back to you and talk about the first day and the auditions and so forth. No problem. No problem. So, you know, Isaac talked a little bit about programming already, but the really important thing to understand is that 
there's so much diversity at camp, and you don't have to pick just one thing. Um, you know, Rose is going to talk about the mechanics of programming in a minute, um, but let's kind of talk a little bit about how you figure out what your schedule is going to be, and that first like 24 hours or so that you're going to be at camp. Because the, when you get to camp, what you want to do is figure out what you're going to be doing for the next three weeks at a time, right? So as you come into camp, uh, you're going to get settled in your cabin. And if you're brand new to camp, that's what you're going to do that first night of camp. You're going to get settled. You're going to figure out where everything is. You're going to take a camp tour. But you don't need a camp tour because you're doing that today. Um, but you're going to get settled. You're going to get your things unpacked and all the rest. In the morning, the following day is what we refer to as our six minor day. And six minor day is a day where you're not committing to anything. You're checking everything out. And that's when we're going to go through and we're going to do all of our placements. Now, the thing about French Woods is that we're a 100% inclusive place. So, for example, if you go down and you audition for circus because you want to be involved in circus, you're going to be placed in an act. And that's the way that is. That's the way it works. Um, you're going to come in. You're going to audition for the musicals. Everybody who auditions for a musical at camp will be placed in a show. But the logistics of that and when you're going to rehearse and what's going to happen, all the rest. First, you're going to do the placements, and then we're going to uh, you're going to sit with your head counselor the next day and figure out your schedule. So, in the morning on that six minor day, what happens is you're going to get up, you're going to um, you're going to do your circus placement, and it's a placement; it's not an audition. You're going to do your if you want to take a dance class, you're going to go. They'll teach you a combination. You'll, they'll see how quickly you pick it up. They'll place you into the classes that you're eligible for. Same thing with music. If you want to be in a rock band, you're going to go down to the rock and roll department. Let them know what kind of music you're interested in. Have you ever played before? Do you want to learn to play? They'll put you in a band with kids that are interested in music. And let me tell you, my son, well, now he's, he's a big boy. He's eight. But as young as six years old, he was the front man in a rock band. They wrote an original song. <laughs> I assure you they had a lot of help from uh, Bernard over there. Uh, but, you know, it was amazing. It was amazing. And as a parent, getting to see my little one get to perform, you know, he played tambourine and he sang. Um, I, they wrote a song called We Have Fun in BJL1, which was awesome. Um, and last summer, they, they did a cover. They, they, they were a cover band last summer. They didn't write a new song. They, they covered, a, a, what did they sing last summer? Uh, I don't remember, but yeah, it was a Green Day song. Uh, anyway, so, you know, it, that's available all the way from the littlest kids all the way up to, you know, we've had kids come in with their orchestral instruments and form ska bands and all sorts of things. So it's really, really diverse. So on that first day, you're going to go down to any of those areas and do a placement and figure out where you're going to be. By the end of that first day, everybody's got all the information. And you're going to know, these are the dance classes I can take. This is um, you know, where, where I'm going to have uh, possibility for my rock band rehearsals and this and that. And the next morning, cast lists go up for circus. Cast lists go up for theater. And you're going to know what parts you are. So when you come in and you audition specifically for theater, and Ron will talk a little bit more about this later on today in terms of the audition technique class. You can be incredibly prepared, or you can come in and sing happy birthday. And all of that is OK. And we just want to see you and get to know you. So if you come in and audition, you're getting placed. Um, additionally, we're going to do for some of the kids, if we need to see a little bit more that afternoon for theater, we will run a little callback session for some of the shows. Sometimes. We get to know you in that first 32 bars. We're good to go. And sometimes we need to know a little bit more. So it's pretty low pressure. The only pressure that happens is what you guys put on yourselves. So we just want to get to know you. OK? Um, what have I forgotten to tell them? A little bit about the minors. So as Isaac was telling you, a major is an activity that the kids choose at the beginning of a three-week session and maintain for the duration of that session. Um, so these are activities that you guys are going to know that you're really interested in. Whereas a minor is an activity chosen daily, and it can be the same every day or different every day, depending on your interest. Right? 
Now, some of, the, some of you guys are going to come in and you're going to say, well, but I have more than three things I really like to do that I want to do every single day. So you can treat your minors as if they're majors and go every single day. And that's especially true in some of our areas because, for example, in our dance department, we have five beautiful dance studios with bars and wood floors and the whole thing. And we have a big staff and we are offering more than, well, there are five dance studios and, and three majors per day. We offer more than 15 dance studio, dance classes every day. So how do we deal with that? Some of those classes happen in minors and you just go every single day. So you can have as committed a day as you want and there are lots of kids who have activities that they go to every single day in their minors and other kids who keep a couple periods free so that they can go to waterfront or you know, go on a trail ride up at horseback. Uh, and that's kind of a great thing. Uh, I really recommend when you're first at camp, keep a period free so you can dabble. You never know, that may be your new first love of everything that you do at camp. And people find new things at camp every summer that become their passions. And it's a really exciting place because, you know, I get asked a lot, you know, is French Woods a performing arts camp? And I mean, to some degree, yeah, we are, we're really known for our performing arts program. But what we really are is we're an individual choice program. And we're a program where you get the level of instruction that you are interested in up to the level that you want. So whatever area you're interested in, you're going to be able to study that as seriously or as not seriously as you guys want. And that's what's exciting about camp. Rose? Hi, guys. I'm Rose, and I'm actually the program director. And while you probably know everything there is to know about it, just in case, um, in your string bags, there's a copy of the parent guide and the camper guide. And um, you, I would, you don't, don't look at it now, but when you get home, you can read all about what, everything, what Beth has said and what Isaac has said and about what kind of classes we offer in each um, department. So that's a, that's a really good thing. Now, how many of you have filled out all your forms? Okay. So why is that important? Um, there's something called a camper confidential form, an activity preference form. And while I have been here for 10 years, prior to that, I was an accountant. So my job is to extract a lot of that important information that you're telling us about your children so that the head counselors will have that. I create a sheet on every child so that they can get to know your child before they get here. So that if your child comes in and says, you know, I want to do skate park all day long, um, I'm actually going to go look and see that mom says no skate park or just one period a day. So I just want you to know that what you your input is really important. We are partners. And the head counselors, which I don't think anybody's talked about yet, are the division leaders. What, uh, um, they have a certain age group of kids, and they are your direct liaison. So they will be talking to you on the phone before your kids get here, but they're also wanting, as I said, get to know your children before they get here and what they're interested in. So please make sure you fill out all those forms for me. And um, I know I've met many of you on the road, um, because I do all those camp fairs, and it's great to see you all here. Just real quickly, I just want to introduce some of the people to you. We mentioned head counselors. We have not, we have a dozen head counselors. They're going to be your your real your contact. You're going to communicate with them. They'll stay in touch with you and let you know what's going on. They're your go-to people. Uh, also, if ever you need to talk to me, if you call up, they will get me on the phone. They're not allowed to take messages. They have to get me, and make sure I speak to you. And I know that when a parent calls, it's important. If I was, you know, I was a parent and I wanted to find out what was going on, I didn't want to hear someone tell me they'll call you tomorrow. So anytime you need me, you'll call. and. Uh, Eric in the office, whoever's there, will ab absolutely make sure they get me to the phone. I just want to point out some of the people that uh, you, you met. Larry, who's uh, in charge of our magic program. 
Uh, some of the head counselors that are here, uh, Bernard, he takes care of the youngest boys. Uh, we've got Danny here who uh, works with Bernard and he takes, there's Danny back there. Uh, these people have been with us for years. They were, uh, Bernard was actually a camper here. Uh, Danny's been here for almost 10 years. Chloe's here, she's also involved with uh, a lot of the girls. Katie, are you here somewhere? There's Katie, she's involved with the youngest girls. Our youngest girls head council will be here early next week. Uh, who did I leave out? I know if Robson's here. Uh, Alice is in, in, involved with the oldest girls. Is Alice here? Just These are people that are gonna take you on tours. You can talk to them about your child. Uh, Lucy's here. She's involved with the middle age group. Uh, we're missing, we have uh, 12 of them. I think eight of them are here. We're missing four of them that'll be here in the next few days. Uh, you, I don't know if you've met Michael. Michael is Beth's significant other, her husband, and the father of that eight-year-old who's about this tall. About this tall. And uh, he also is one of the co-directors of the camp. Um, you met Rose, and of course you met Ron and Beth, and there's Karen is here, Kat we call her. Uh, is Kat here? She was the one who's leading us in song. Uh, that's Ron's, that's Beth's sister, who also grew up here in, in theater, and Scott Schaefer, if he's here, he's our IT person. Uh, there's so many other people you get to meet, Natty, who does a lot of the uh, uh, um, work in the theaters, a lot of the tech work. There's, we're going to have a staff of very close to 500 once the summer starts. We have children from... 40 countries and 40 states that come through our doors along with our staff that's international. Oh, there's Kenna, where's Kenna, is she here? Kenna uh, is our um, manager of all the theaters, production managers. When I do evening activities and work with the kids, she makes sure I do it correctly. She makes sure everything is a go. When you come to see a show, she makes sure She's in charge of us. Without her, we couldn't do it. Anyway, so I just, yes, I, and of course, the person that you saw leading you in song could play anything, sing anything, play any instrument. He's incredible. He works on Broadway, off Broadway. He writes his own music. Uh, that's Josh Freilich. He's an incredible young man. Josh. Josh, how many years is this for you? Is this 20 yet? 16. Not bad. Okay, we also have uh, uh, James Robinson, who is our uh, sports director. I don't know if he's in here. There he is. He heard his name. He's like a legitimate athlete. He's 6'8", and he can actually handle the ball and shoot. Um, and we have Gareth, who does our fencing. He's a co-director in sports. And I want to introduce Jill. She's a very, very important person to us. Is Jill here? She's our head nurse. She actually tells the doctors what to do, which is very important. We have uh, nine nurses and a doctor pretty much every session. And uh, first session, in a lot of the sessions, we'll have two doctors this summer. And we have a clinic that's about seven miles away and, about, and, and a small hospital that's about 20 minutes away. But I'll talk to the parents about that. What I'd like to do is get you out of here in a couple of minutes. Um, just one thing about programming that I'm always asked, kids are never locked out of a program. The way the program is written, it's such that when we offer something, there's going to be room for the kids. And because we have a two-to-one ratio of children to staff, you'll see a lot of small classes and a lot of attention paid to the children. The only time you might find where there's a large number of kids is um, in the dining room. And uh, sometimes you'll go to a show, they'll have 40, 50 kids, which is great because you have dancers and you have uh, people that are uh, part of the chorus and you have, of course, the leads and so forth. So that might be a little bit bigger group, but most of the classes are very small and the kids get tremendous attention. And there's no camp in the country that has that kind of ratio of staff and children, none whatsoever. We have bunks with about 10, 11 kids. 
usually around 10 kids and as many as four counselors. And if we don't have four counselors, we have three counselors and a junior counselor. So again, most camps have 10 kids and two staff members. So this is a real, you know, this place goes all out to make sure the kids are safe, make sure they're supervised, and make sure they got the best of all kinds of activities ever. And just a word, you'll notice everybody here is wearing a badge. Uh, every adult that comes on here has to go through the office. There's, you know, we, we have a gate at the, you know, somebody watching the gate so nobody can get in here. And for someone to walk around here, uh, on, a, on a regular day, they have to have a badge. We have a, you know, equipment where someone comes in, they give them their, their um, driver's license, and they get one of these also.